Previously, Chu King accompanied Chengxi to the Lai family to fight Lai Huanger. Wang King later came with her men, also Tang Jai with the Chengfang army. Tang Rong suddenly arrived later to attack the Lai family personally, and it was finally defeated. After this, Chu Ting and his family moved into his new mansion on Vermilion Bird Street. Chu King meets Sing Lai at the Xing family's residence to tell her he has moved to Vermilion Bird Street. The challenge she gave his sister if she must marry her son, and asks when she will marry her son to his sister. She replies that she already knew he would come and says that his sister and her son should get engaged first, and the marriage will be during the Chinese New Year. Chu Ting asks her why she wants that, and she replies that she wants him to marry her daughter too. Chu Ting becomes shocked and refuses, making an excuse that he is not worthy of marrying into such a famous family. Afterward, he heads to the Zhai family's residence and meets the Zhai family giving Zhai Yu punishment for using the family's name privately for the medicine auction. Zhai Yu is glad to see Chu Ting and takes him to a private place to discuss with him. He expresses his anticipation to see the green dragon Chu Ting promised to show him and Chu Ting tells him that he needs some purple bamboo that is at least a hundred years old from the purple bamboo forest. Jia Yu contacts someone to find it immediately, and Chu Ting returns home. He contacts Chengxi and Xiao Wu to tell them he will catch the green dragon in two days. Meng Zui sees him and collects his phone to see who he is chatting with. She says she also wants to come along, but Chu Ting objects since she is pregnant. Meng Zui asks why he asked her to help him fight when he was in danger but is now concerned that she is pregnant. She insists that she will go, and he reluctantly accepts. Meng Zui then suddenly grabs and kisses him, and you know of course, he continues kissing her too. Chu Xiao badges in to disturb them, but her father cautions her and tells them to continue. After a while, Chu Ting receives a call from Jia Yu who tells him he got a purple bamboo forest filled with many old purple bamboos and asks if he needs a few or wants to buy the whole forest. Chu Ting tells him to buy the entire forest as it must be a treasure since it has many old purple bamboos. After he hangs the call, Meng Zi tells him she has a bad feeling and asks if he offended someone and they want revenge. Suddenly, Elder Xing Wei arrives to tell him that Xing Lai wants him to come over immediately. Chu Ting is surprised and tells her that Sing Lai could have just called him over the phone, and Sing Wei threatens that he won't be able to return if he doesn't come with her immediately. Chu King heads to the Xing family's residence, and Sing Lai welcomes him with a hard punch. He wonders how he offended her again, and she tells him he hid the truth about the green dragon. Chu Ting replies that she also made his sister wait outside the whole night before deciding to help when he needed help. Chu Ting tells her they are now even. Sing Lai tells him that the news from the Yunjing River was leaked, and a group of second-generation ancestors came to investigate from the royal capital, asking her what she knows about the Green Dragon. She further tells him that she can handle them as they are just a group of juniors, but the issue is with their family elders, which they got letters from. She also tells him that they are still in her house, and they demand she hands him over to them. Chu Ting is shocked. He cannot let another steal the Green Dragon from him, as his child could be in danger. Chu Ting tells her to help him delay them and asks her what she wants in return. She tells him that she wants the green dragon's tail, to which he replies he can only give her that if he succeeds in catching the green dragon, considering that a third party is now involved. He heads back home and wonders who leaked the message, thinking if it is Zhai Yu or Chengxi. He receives a call from Xiao Wu, who asks him what they should do about it as the imperial city would soon come to find it too. Chu Ting tells her that people from the Imperial City are already in Jinmen and asks if she doesn't already know this. Xiao Wu perceives that Chu Ting suspects her of leaking the information about the Green Dragon, and she tells him she is not the one. Chu Ting then tells her to pack her things, head to Cloud Mountain, and wait for him at the Purple Summit. He says that Jia Yu would be there too, and she should tell him he sent her. After the call, Xiao Wu reasons that she has to help Chu Ting catch the Green Dragon, otherwise he will kill her. Chu King leaves his room and sees a stranger greeting his family. His mom introduces her as Chu Lan, his cousin. Chu Ting remembers that Gong Yu said her engagement was supposed to be with him. Chu Ting greets him shabbily and excuses himself to return to his room. But Chu Lan walks up to him and tells him he wants to discuss something with him in his room. On getting to the room, Chu Lan reveals that he came because of the Green Dragon. He asks Chu Ting to reveal everything he knows about the Green Dragon offering to reward him with millions, but Chu Ting feigns ignorance, and Chu Lan threatens to deal with him if he refuses to tell him. However, Chu Ting tells him to go out when he is done, 
Chu Lan gets angry and launches an attack. Being more powerful, Chu King punches him before he can do anything, sending him flying. Chu Lan attacks again with the Golden Palm Strike, but Chu King dissolves the attack easily. Chu Ting grabs him by the neck, and Chu Lan asks if his mother taught him the techniques. Chu Lan tells Chu Tsing that his mother vowed to the Chu family never to teach anyone martial arts when her cultivation was crippled, but she has broken her vow. Chu King uses the opportunity to ask what made the Chu family treat his mother like that. Chu Lan tells Chu King that his father was drugged and thrown onto the sixth elder's bed, then his mother was lured to the room, and after she saw her husband, she got enraged and killed the sixth elder. Chu Ting begins to choke him, attempting to kill him, but he reasons that the Chu family might come for his family if he kills Chu Lan. He leaves him alone and sends him out of his room. Chu Ting and Meng Zhu leave home the next day to embark on the mission to catch the Green Dragon. On their way, Chu Ting tells Meng Zhu about the leakage of information about the Green Dragon. She becomes worried for her child, but Chu Ting assures her that he will do his best to catch the Green Dragon and bring the necessary materials needed for the child's survival. They head to Chengxi's place to carry her, and Chu Ting suspects Wang Qing leaked the information. On getting to the Yi family's mansion, Chu Ting confronts Wang Qing for leaking the information about the Green Dragon, and she confesses looking sober. Chu Ting grabs her neck and attempts to choke her, but Chengxi pleads for her sister. He leaves her but threatens to bury her with the Green Dragon if anything happens to it. He leaves with Meng Zui and Chengxi. Wang Qing begins to cry. Her phone's wallpaper gets revealed, showing Chu Ting's picture. Does she like him? After getting to Cloud Mountain, they meet Xiao Wu and Zhai Yu, already waiting. Xiao Wu is a bit scared of what Chu Ting might do to her, but she tries to get comfortable around him since she didn't do anything wrong. She tells him about her friend, who also came from the Imperial Capital, to inquire about the Green Dragon. She however says that she didn't reveal anything to her and suggests that could bring her on board since the information about the Green Dragon has leaked anyway, and ask her to pay too. Chu Ting tells Zhai Yu to handle the business matters while he goes into the forest to get something. After a while, he returns with a purple bamboo stick and sees a new lady standing with them. Zhai Yu tells him that the lady is willing to pay a whopping 500 million at a go. Looking at the lady, Chu King perceives that she is extraordinary and is not like the other idiots from the imperial capital. She introduces herself as Shu and compliments his handsomeness. Chu King gets cocky and tells her he was expecting her to ask him how much it costs to have him for the night. Shu laughs and asks anyway. Meng Zui and Chengxi get angry. Chu King gives Zai Yu the bamboo stick, while he gets more as they need to make a bamboo raft before they set off. Zai Yu tells Chu Ting that if he knew this was what Chu King needed, he could have gotten some people to make thousands of it in a day without spending much work and time. Shu insults him that he is blind and asks of his golden eye, as the manager of the auction house, is only for decoration. Jai Yu is embarrassed, and he decides to make use of his golden eye. He discovers the bamboo stick is so powerful that it affects his eye. Then, they all enter the forest to look for more bamboo, leaving Chu King and Shu behind. Shu tries to touch the bamboo rod in Chu King's hand, but he takes it away, saying it is not for her to touch. She then gets naughty and refers to his long rod. Chu Ting asks why she didn't come with her colleagues in the second generation group from the imperial capital. She tells him she is more interested in him than in the green dragon and reveals that she knows a lot about him and his family. Chu Ting discovers that she is from the Gong family, and he gets angry and tries to attack her with the purple bamboo rod, but she dodges it. She tells him that he was supposed to marry her and Chu Lan should have married Gong Yu, but it was changed. Chu Ting asks her if Gong Yu's losing her abilities has something to do with her. She gets angry and attacks him. Chu King blocks it but realizes she has a solid cultivation base and martial arts talent. Chu Ting launches his own attack, but she just blocks it with one arm. She is way more powerful than Chu Ting. Chu Ting reasons that Gong Shu is Gong Yu's enemy, but has a close relationship with Xiao Wu, Gong Yu's confidant. Gong Shu tells him not to think about the matter between her and Gong Yu as it is very complicated. She tells him that more than 30 people came from the imperial capital, among which three are so powerful that even she cannot handle them. She advises that if he wastes his energy like this, he might not even get the green dragon stung, not to talk of the other significant parts. Jai Yu and the others return with the bamboo shaft they made and head to Yunjiang. They head upstream on the raft and paddle overnight, without finding the green dragon. Jai Yu, already tired, asks Xu Tsing how long they have to paddle, and Xu Ting tells him he doesn't know. 
Meanwhile, the second generation group is also in the same vicinity, searching for the green dragon but on land. They are already exhausted too. After a while, Shu King discovers the bamboo has changed color and infers that the green dragon is downstream, meaning they must turn around and head back. Chu Ting explains that the purple bamboo was born from the collection of Qi Haifeng Qi, and its transportation can be used to explore the Yunjiang fortune, which makes it the best way to find the green dragon. She, one of the three powerful people in the second generation group, also discovers, using her compass, that they have to head back. The second generation team gets angry, but they also turn around anyway. Main Zubi asks Xu Tsing if the second generation group will find the green dragon before them, and he tells her they won't. Chengxi gets sad and jealous seeing Meng Zui and Xu Ting together. Gong Xu notices this and asks her if she likes Xu Ting too. Chengxi acts hostile and Gong Xu tells her that she and Meng Zui don't have a chance to be with him since he already has a marriage contract with the Gong family. However, Chengxi shocks her when she says that Xu Ting and Meng Zui are already married. Gong Xu gets angry and attempts to attack Meng Zui, but Xu King protects her and almost falls into the river. However, he uses the bamboo stick to gain balance and returns to the raft. Chu Ting asks what the problem is, and she replies that Meng Zui dared to force him to marry her when he already belonged to the Gong family. Chu Ting tells her that he offered to marry her and wasn't forced to. Meng Zui is surprised that Chu King is defending her, knowing that she actually forced him to marry her. Chu Ting tells Gong Xu that he and Gong Yu disagreed with the marriage contract, but she doesn't listen and still keeps yelling at him. He then tells them to talk about it later, or she should leave the ship if she plans to continue causing trouble. She then asks him what he thinks of the marriage contract, and he replies that he has already dumped it in the trash can. She yells at him that he should get ready to receive the wrath of the Gong and Shu families. Meng Zhu whispers and asks if he still has the marriage contract, but he tells her that he has really dumped it in the trash can. Chengxi wears a sullen face. She really likes Chu Ting. Suddenly, Chu Ting feels something in the river with the bamboo stick, which also changes color. Jai Yu uses his golden eye to check what is in the water and sees an enormous energy flow. Chu Ting asks who can swim, and Jai Yu says he can. Chu Ting tells him to enter the water and fish what is in the water. Jai Yu gets scared and reluctant, but Gong Shu kicks him into the water. After some time, Jai Yu returns with some snails, saying they are the only things he saw beneath the water. Chu Ting is surprised, seeing it's a unique type of snail. He tells him to go and get more. After Jai Yu returns, they wonder what they will do with the snails, and Chu Ting tells them to fry and eat. They are shocked, but Jai Yu volunteers to prepare the meal. When he is done, they all eat. However, Chu Ting tells them he and Meng Zui would be excluded. Meng Zui goes speechless, wondering why he doesn't want her to eat such a delicious meal prepared by Jai Yu. A while after they have finished eating, Chengxi wishes she could have an extra plate, and suddenly, they all start to feel strange. The feeling gets so intense that Chengxi screams out in pain. She then discovers that she has broken through the 8th martial arts rank. Gong Xu and Xiao Wu see this and start cultivating too. Meanwhile, Jia Yu is bleeding from his nose, and when Meng Zui asks Xu Xing about it, he tells her that the nose bleed will stop as the green dragon's qi nourishes the snails they ate, they are capable of increasing one's power if eaten. He tells her it will react negatively with the innate green dragon chi in her belly, so he didn't let her eat them. She asks why he didn't eat too, and he replies that he doesn't need it. Jai Yu's golden eyes suddenly break through. He becomes excited and offers to hold the purple bamboo stick so he can know when they hit a new treasure in the river. However, Chu Ting refuses to give it to him, knowing he can't handle it. Only Gong Shu and Meng Zui can handle it, but Meng Zui is not in the best state, and he doesn't trust Gong Su so he has to continue holding it. Although, he is surprised the green dragon has yet to reveal itself even after they have taken some of Yunjiang's luck. She discovers a change in her compass and realizes that some people have stolen some of Yunjiang's luck. She expects them to die miserably. The bamboo changes in color again, and while Zhai Yu prepares to enter the river again, Gong Shu draws him back and jumps into the river instead. After a while, she brings out a turtle. Zhai Yu cooks, and they all eat again. They continue the cultivation and increase in realms. Chu Ting watches Gong Shu and reasons this could also be a good chance for Gong Yu. At night, Meng Su discovers that Chu King's hands are already bruised from holding the bamboo stick for a very long. Meng Su says catching the green dragon is more challenging than she thought and asks him exactly what the others are eating. 
Chu King tells her not to worry about it. Actually, while Chengxi and the others were increasing their cultivation base by absorbing Yun Zhang's luck, he was backlashed by Yun Zhang's air luck instead. Meng Zhu suggests they return home, but Chu Ting tells her they must continue what they have already started. She starts cultivating to relieve him of the pain, but he stops her. She starts bleeding too. Chu King tells her he won't do things he is unsure about and won't let her hurt their child. He tells her that he is tired and she should not distract him. Meng Zhu kisses him and appreciates him for helping her so much. Chu Ting feels good in reasons that this feeling was missing in his previous life. Gong Xu announces to Chu Ting that she has broken into the transformation realm, making her the youngest warrior martial artist in her family. She thanks Chu Ting and says she will help him solve the issue around the marriage contract for free and also volunteers to help him hold the purple bamboo stick. She carries the stick and realizes that Chu Ting has been carrying such a heavy stick for three days without sleeping. Chu Ting carries Meng Zhu and goes to sleep. The next morning, Gong Xu is already drained of all her energy as the purple bamboo has sucked it. Suddenly, something hits the purple bamboo beneath the water, and Gong Xu wonders what it is. On hearing this, Chu Ting wakes up immediately. Turbulence begins in the river, and the raft almost capsizes. Gong Xu starts to use her martial arts to fight the turbulence. Chu Ting touches the raft with one hand and uses the other to maneuver the raft through the storm with his powers. The storm becomes stronger, and Zhai Yu almost falls off the raft, but he holds on to Gong Xu. Gong Xu saves Zhai Yu by pushing him back into the raft while she falls in the river. Chu Ting quickly grabs the bamboo rod to prevent it from falling into the river. He then asks who will go and fetch Gong Xu out of the river. Jai Yu immediately jumps into the river and saves Gong Xu. Gong Xu reasons that she still has a long way to go in the martial arts journey and should not become complacent because of her recent achievement. They see the little golden fish that caused the turbulence and wonder how powerful it is. Chu Ting tells them it is just a step away from becoming a green dragon. He is still surprised that the green dragon has yet to appear, even after they captured a carp of this level. He suspects that something has happened to the green dragon. They continue their journey on the river. Chu Ting tells them that when they reach the border of the river, they should all get off the boat. Meng Zui and Chen Xi ask why, and he answers that they are about to dig out the foundation of the Yunjing River since the Green Dragon, who should have appeared, has failed too, which means something has happened to it. Hearing this, Meng Zui and Chen Xi protest and say they will accompany him. Meanwhile, she reasons that she could not even dare to go on the water and chose to go on land, but Chu Ting used the water route and has repeatedly stolen Yunjang's luck, and yet he is still alive. She suddenly discovers someone in the transformation realm with Chu Ting on his wrath and wonders who it could be. She reasons it can't be Xing Lai, the only martial artist currently in the transformation realm. She becomes shocked when she realizes it is Gong Xu, and the others are amazed that she has attained the transformation realm at such an age. She immediately orders them to cut the trees and build a boat quickly so they can catch up with them. After a while, in a particular location on the river, Chu Ting grabs the purple bamboo stick and heads for the river. He stirs the water body with it, forming large standing waves. The second generation group, now in the water, sees this and they wonder if Chu Ting is causing this. She affirms it is him. Chu King uses martial arts techniques and the black dragon jumps out of the river. On seeing this, two ladies from the second generation group jump after it, and when Gong Xu sees them, she launches into the air after them claiming they saw the dragon first before them. Chu Ting discovers the black dragon has fainted, so he makes some martial arts move and touches it, causing it to be revived. The black dragon roars very loudly and heads back into the river. Chu Ting returns to his raft, and Gong Xu asks why he let the dragon escape. He replies that the green dragon is already gone, and they cannot capture this one too, since they've already stolen most of Yunjang's luck. If they also capture the black dragon, there'd be many grave consequences that they won't be able to bear. One of the three powerful ladies in the second generation group, the Kai, demands that Chu Ting bow to her. Although the worship of the Empress has been long abolished, the lady is doing this to insult Chu Ting deliberately. Chu Ting replies that it depends on if they can bear it, and he goes on his knees. She immediately discovers that he is using his luck to worship the Kai. She realizes that his luck is powerful enough to compete with the luck of Yunjang, and Akai cannot bear it. So she quickly jumps in to protect Akai and gets hit by Chu King's luck, causing severe injuries. Chu Fi, the third of the powerful ladies in the second generation group, sees this and launches an attack on Chu Ting. 
but Gong Xu protects Chu Ting and hits her. Chu Ting tells them he will not kill them, and they should return as though nothing happened at the Yanjing River. Chu Lan is shocked and can't believe that this is Chu Ting for him to have opposed and trampled the three powerful ladies. After the second generation group leaves, Chu Ting faints from exposing himself to Yun Zhang's powerful spiritual energy. They all deliberate over returning while Chu Ting sleeps, but Meng Zui says she won't return. Chu Ting suddenly wakes up and asks if they will accompany him, as he wants to go into the mountain to find the dragon's nest. They are shocked that there is even something like that, and he tells them the dragon's nest is usually not in the river, but in the mountain nearby. They plan to head out into the mountains the following day. After a while of others sleeping, Gong Xu asks Chu Tsing to go on a walk with her. She asks him why he desperately wants to catch the green dragon, and Chu Ting explains the situation around Meng Zui to her. She is surprised he is looking for the dragon because of Meng Zui. She is amazed and becomes more attracted to him. Returning to where the others are, Chu Ting ties the black dragon's beard to the bamboo stick. It would help them in detecting the location of the dragon's nest. They follow the direction of the dragon beard, and after walking for a while, Chu King perceives that there is an incoming arrow directed towards them, and he immediately grabs it while it's still in the air. Chu Ting observes the arrow and discovers it was made for humans and not beasts, as it was designed to injure martial artists in the third and fourth ranks of the martial realm. They realize that there are also two other groups in the forest aside from them. They soon see a corpse lying in the forest, and shockingly, Meng Zhu recognizes the group the dead person is from. Gong Xu also recognizes the group, and Chu Ting wonders if she knows anything. He asks her, and she tells him she does, but the information could be more helpful at the moment, and she is also unwilling to tell him. Chu Ting considers Gong Xu's countenance and infers that the power behind the lady that was killed is not simple. A different group finds the dead body also and burn it. Chu Ting and his team enter into more traps as more arrows are shot at them. Chu Ting says they are about to reach the core area where the two groups are fighting. Suddenly, a twig elongates and grabs Zhaoyu's legs. It tries to pull him away, but Gong Xu rescues him. More twigs come at them, but Chu King uses a martial arts technique to create a barricade around them that protects them. Chu Ting says this is a spell of the wood attribute, and the caster is a monk. Knowing that the wood monks like to hide in the canopy and mimic trees, he spots the monk and launches toward her. He then grabs her and throws her down. She asks if he has anything to do with King Zhuan's legacy, and Chu Ting replies that they are just passing by and don't know what that is. She tells him and his team to leave the forest, then, since they are not related, and if they don't want to be killed. Chu Ting tells her that her life is in his hands, and she gets angry. Chu Ting tortures and interrogates her. She threatens that the Xuan Nu Palace won't let him go. She intentionally combusts herself and dies. Chu Ting and his team continue following the directions of the Black Dragon's beard, and Chu Ting tells them they are close to the dragon nest. Suddenly, Chengxi sees an illusion of her mom running past her into the forest, and she immediately runs after her. Chengxi soon falls into a pitfall, but Chu Ting quickly grabs her hand and draws her out. She attempts to continue chasing her supposed mother, but Chu King stops her and says he will find her. He jumps on a tree and sees a palm imprint on it. He discovers that Chengxi really saw someone and the person is at least two levels higher than him, which made him unable to detect the person with his spiritual sense. He wonders what such a master is doing in the forest and why Chengxi recognized her as her mother. Suddenly, the lady appears in a bear mask behind him and jumps off. He reasons she could have arranged the traps and is probably from the Xuan Nu Palace. He chases after her, but the lady keeps going in circles. He reasons that the lady is not that strong and can't be the lady Chengxi saw, he eventually catches her and removes the mask from her face. He is shocked to discover that it is Lai Huanger. She jumps into the waterfall before them, and he wonders why she is in the forest too. Coincidentally and quite luckily, he discovers the dragon nest he has been searching for is under the waterfall. He decides to return to Meng Zui and others first so they won't be worried about him. As he heads back, he meets Gong Shu and asks what she is doing. She actually came to look for him since he had been away for a while. Chu Ting hastens up to meet the others. He tells Gong Xu not to have left the others behind as she is the one who could protect them while he was away. They search for a while but can't find them, so Chu King suggests that they set up a fire to attract them. Suddenly, he senses someone in the bush nearby and tells Gong Xu to chase her. After catching her, he uses the soul-searching technique and discovers that the lady is from the Xuan Nu Palace. 
Afterward, the lady self-combusts, as the monk did earlier. Chu Ting wonders what the Xuan Nu Palace is where women can practice martial arts and Taoism. Meanwhile, Meng Zhu meets one of the women from the Xuan Palace, and the lady bows to her. Meng Zhu asks what they are doing in the forest, and she replies that they came on the order of Guardian Su to investigate the King Xuan sect. Meng Zhu kills her and decides to find Chu King and the others. In another location within the forest, Cheng Xi fights with another lady from the Xuan Palace, and she realizes that the lady is way stronger than her. However, a strange lady rescues her, and Cheng Xi discovers it's her mom. She tries to speak with her, but she leaves instantly and returns to the top of a tree to meet Lai Huanger. While Chu Ting and Gong Xu search for the others, they suddenly hear the sound of Xiao Wu's shotgun. Xiao Wu, now severely injured, is with Zhai Yu, and they are faced with three ladies from the Xuandu Palace. Chu Ting and Gong Xu come to their rescue. Chu Ting reasons that Meng Zui should be able to defend herself against those women as they are not that strong, but Cheng Xi might be in trouble. So he tells Zhai Yu and Xiao Wu to stay back and hide while they go to look for Meng Zui and Cheng Xi. Other way, Gong Xu reveals that her father is the Empress younger brother, and Chu Ting is intrigued. They separate to search for Cheng Xi and Meng Zui individually. After a while, Chu Ting sees Meng Zhu, and she runs to hug him. Chu Ting tells her that he has found the dragon nest and assures her that everything will be fine. She asks him if he can lend her his mask. Chu Ting brings it out, drops a drop of her blood on it to make it recognize her, and gives it to her. She brings Chu King's sword and wields it. She realizes that the sword has a strong murderous aura. He tells her the mask can also take any form she wants, and she tries it by changing it to another type. She puts the mask on and returns to meet others together with Chu Ting. Gong Xu also returns with Cheng Xi. Cheng Xi tells Chu Ting that she saw her mother, and that her mother saved her. The others disbelieve this, but Chu Ting tells her if he believes it, as the person he chased earlier was Lai Huanger. They are shocked and wonder how she got there. But Chu Ting tells them not to worry about that and focus on getting the dragon nest. They head towards the waterfall, and on getting to a particular place, Chu Ting becomes uncomfortable with the atmosphere. Suddenly, rain begins to fall, and they wonder how it is raining at such a time. Chu Ting reasons that this is the rain technique and infers that the person who cast the spell is in at least the Mahayan realm, equivalent to the martial saint realm. A slap from such a person would be death. He wonders what the monk is planning to do. Meng Zhu says hiding their traces in the rain would be difficult, and the people from the Xuan Palace will soon find them. Meanwhile, Lai Huanger and King Mai are watching them. Lai Huanger asks her if she is still King Mai, and she replies yes and no, as her strength is greatly damaged. She says she cannot go into a fight with the Xuan Palace, and would need the help of someone which she has already spotted in Chu King's group to get rid of them. Chu Ting detects that some people have been following them. He challenges them to reveal themselves if they have anything to say. Su Hufa and the other Xuan Palace members reveal themselves. Su Hufa demands that someone should come and talk with her. Jai Yu decides to go, but Chu King stops him and tells Gong Xu to go instead, but she refuses. He then asks Meng Zui to, and she refuses too. He wonders why Meng Zhu doesn't want to talk with her. However, Cheng Xi offers to speak with Su Hufa. Chu Ting tells her not to be afraid and that he will use voice transmission to talk with her secretly so she can know what to say to her. Su Hufa asks Cheng Xi what they are doing in the forest since they are not part of the remnants of King Xuan that they desire to eliminate. She replies that they came for the green dragon and got lost in the mountains. On hearing this, Su Hufa is shocked and asks if they really know about the green dragon. Cheng Xi tells her that they have a way to find it. Su Hufa then offers to reward them greatly if they can find the green dragon. However, she tells Cheng Xi to kill the two men among them before they embark on the mission. Cheng Xi gets angry, but Chu King uses the voice transmission technique to tell her that she should say they will be used as bait to lure out the green dragon. They all head to the waterfall, and Chu King makes the X1 palace believe through Cheng Xi that there's danger down the waterfall, so they should be allowed to go first to prepare the way. Chu Ting and others jump down the waterfall and come out in front of a tunnel. Chu Ting tells them the tunnel leads to the dragon nest, and they all head inside it. The Xuan Nu Palace group soon realizes they were tricked and head down the waterfall too. Chu Ting and the others finally arrive at the dragon nest. They discover that the dragon is already dead, and its flesh has decayed. Chu Ting reasons that this is strange as the body of a dragon usually doesn't rot for hundreds of years after death. He suddenly discovers that there is Wusha, the poison that affected him and King Mai. 
in the remnants of the dragon's bones. He infers that this makes sense as the dragon swallowed Kingmei, which could have caused the dragon to die. Chengxi concludes that her mother is still alive but wonders why she isn't coming back to look for them. And Chu Ting tells her that it can only be because she exchanged life with the dragon in the process of the dragon absorbing the wuxia from her body. Meng Su becomes dejected and touches her stomach, but Chu Ting reassures her that he will find a solution. He then tells everyone to step back as he begins to use his martial arts powers on the remnant of the dragon. He absorbs the dragon's soul remnant and inserts it in Meng Zui's stomach. The Xuan Nu Palace group arrives, and Xu Hufa threatens to kill them for tricking her. Chu King asks how she is sure she won't be the one to die. She gets angry and prepares to attack, but Chu Ting generates some powers and strikes the dragon with them, suddenly reviving it. Su Hufa becomes scared, and the dragon uses its tail to hit her away. She yells at them that they deserve death, but her subordinates tell her that she can't be him as the golden light that shines around him is Yunjiang's luck. The X1 palace group turns back and leaves the tunnel. Chu Ting caresses the dragon and tells it to go. It obeys and runs out of the tunnel, causing the tunnel walls to crumble. Chu Ting becomes exhausted due to Yunjiang's luck he used and Meng Zhu supports him. They head towards the exit. Su Hufa returns to the shore, and she becomes determined to kill Chu Ting. Suddenly, Lai Wanger appears before her. King Mai also arrives and begins to suck life out of her with her power. She tells Su Hufa that she is King Xuan. Su Hufa is shocked and tells her that King Xuan is dead, and besides, he is a man. Lai Huanger becomes confused and asks if she is King Mai or King Zhuan. King Mai laughs and explains that she has two vivid memories in her soul, one of King Mai and the other of King Zhuan. She further says that sometimes she is King Mai and other times King Zhuan. She tells her she wants to leave the forest and asks if she wants to go with her. Lai Huanger tells her she would love to go with her as she has no place to return to. King Mai then tells her she might accept her as her disciple. Chu Ting and others return from the tunnel and hop in a chopper to take them back to the city. In the air, Chengxi sees her mom in the forest and cries. Chu Ting and Meng Zhu return home, and he notices that Gong Xu is following them. He asks her to go with Xiao Wu, but she says she wants to know where he lives. They soon meet Shi Dekai and Jifei waiting at their home. She thanks Chu Ting for not killing her the last time. He says whatever and starts to go inside. Dekai asks him if he plans to stay in Jinmen for his entire life. He replies that he will be admitted to the National University and will go to the Imperial Capital. Dakai laughs and tells him she will be waiting then. He heads inside with Meng Zui and Gong Xu and meets his sister, romancing her boyfriend in the living room. She sees Gong Xu and asks why he is hooking up with another woman again. Gong Xu makes a funny comment and Meng Zui heads inside. Chu Xiao continues to rant about him seeing another woman besides Meng Zui. Chu Xiao then tells him that one of his classmates came to look for him two days back. He thinks it is Song Choran, but she tells him it is Tang Xian. Chu Ting wonders why Tang Xian came to see him since he has been against the Tang family while supporting the Yi family. Chu Xiao shows him the admission ticket Tang Xian brought for him, saying that the college admission exam is the next day. Chu Ting is shocked. He collects the ticket and quickly runs to his room to start studying. He begins studying and reasons that the only way he can engrave all the book's contents into his mind is with God's knowledge. Main Zhu later comes into his room and assists him with his study. She remembers her encounter with the Xuan Palace group in the forest. What is Meng Zui's relationship with the Xuan Palace group? Is she hiding something from Chu Ting and trying to fool him? Let us know if you want the next part in the comment section by commenting reverse. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. See you guys in the next video.